special sign I happen to discover. They hold three fingers in the air and flash it to each other. They send their greetings to you. They sing them and they shout. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The alarm. Hey there! I'm back! Yoo-hoo! Wait! My chocolate bunny! It was standing right here! What's this, a dog? Not that one, another one! I had two bunnies. I just got them as a present. You had two bunnies? Are you sure of that? Of course! You think I don't know my ones from my twos? Huh. Then someone stole one. Unless, uh, unless... <gasps> you went and ate it yourself! Me? How come I don't remember anything about it? Maybe you're a sleepwalker. What is a sleepwalker? Someone who gets up from his bed at night without waking up. He crosses the room, eats one of his chocolate bunnies, and doesn't remember a thing in the morning. But in the morning, the bunny was still there. Yeah? Huh. How about... Your mother? Could she have taken it? She doesn't like when you're eating too much candy. No, she doesn't. She says that candy's terrible for my teeth. And so, to save your teeth from these sweets, she snuck quietly into your room, snatched one of the rabbits, and ate it. But Mom's the one who gave them to me as a present. And so why would she take it? Yeah? Then I just don't know. Well, I do. I think it was your father. He wouldn't steal it. We know he's allergic to chocolate. <laughs> Next he'll tell us how the fish took it. You know, I always thought there was something fishy about those fish. No doubt about it. They stole the bunny. <laughs> Uh-huh. And then they hid it in their aquarium. <laughs> oh, no, like, that's funny. You know what, Tom Thomas? You need to protect that other chocolate hair. Exactly. It has to be eaten right away. Now, before it disappears. Just wait a little. You don't have to eat it. Let's think of something else. Of course. We need a security alarm. Need what? <sighs> The alarm was invented to keep houses, cars, and other valuable things safe and secure. The simplest alarm is a siren or light bulb that is connected by wires to a door or window. When someone tries to open a door that has an alarm on it, the alarm goes off, making the siren howl and the light flash. Alarms can also be set up to call the police if they go off. Super! But where can we get ourselves a security alarm? You have an electronic construction kit, remember? You're right. Then bring it over here. Nolik, help me! is the Fixie's victory call. When a job is well done and we Fixies are proud of our work, we exclaim, Tadish! And raise up our hand with our thumb and first two fingers sticking out. You want to know what it means? It's very simple. Fixies love solving problems and fixing things that are broken. And do you know what you need to do to solve a problem? First, you need to find out what's broken. Second, understand why it broke. And third, repair what's broken so it works again. So do what the Fixies do and first, find it. Second, understand it. And third, fix it. Tadish! <laughs> it really is a great word and it sounds funny, but we Fixies surely like it a lot. Well, Tom Thomas, turn on the alarm. You sure the alarm will work? I'm sure, without a doubt. You're 
under arrest. Freeze! Chusaka? Why are you stealing my chocolate? wrote in my assignment book. Bad behavior during the lesson, fidgeting, and talking. What are you gonna do with a red pen? Your teacher left something out? I thought maybe, you know, I could fix it a bit. I hope I find that pen. a couple of no's, and then it will say that I had no bad behavior during the lesson, no fidgeting, and no talking. See, no problem. Cool. And then add this at the end. Tom Thomas is a perfect student. Nah, then they would guess I did it. What, is it clogged up? A little scribble will do it. That's not a pen, it's more like a pen knife. Look, the ball's missing. What ball? It's a pen. It's a pen, but it's a ballpoint pen. <laughs> Old-fashioned pens work by dipping the pen into a jar of ink. But with a ballpoint pen, the ink is stored inside of a tube that has a metal tip on the end with a small steel ball. Well, small for humans, that is, but of course, for fixies, it's quite large. When you drag the pen across the paper, the ball spins around and gets ink on it from inside the tube. Then it turns over and the ink rolls out onto the paper. So without the ball, a ballpoint pen won't write at all. So what am I going to do? That's my only red pen. Hi, everybody. Why do you look so sad? Uh, we lost the ball from the tip of this pen. Where? It's here somewhere. Then you're in luck, boys. In the pack of mat there's a metal detector. You can use it to find different kinds of metal objects. <laughs> nah, that's not it. I can see that myself. It's not on the table, Nolik. Until not that long ago, humans used pens that had to be dipped over and over again into an inkwell. This was quite inconvenient. And so to make writing easier, the fountain pen was invented. A fountain pen could be filled up with ink so it could write for a much longer time. But fountain pens would often leak, leaving blots of ink on the paper. This problem was solved with the invention of the ballpoint pen. Ballpoint pens are simple, handy, and reliable, except that you can't write with them on a wall or upside down for a long time. That's because the ball uses up the ink on it, and the ink can't flow up to the tip. But even this problem has been solved. There are now special ballpoint pens that can be used by astronauts floating in space. How awesome my metal detector is? Is that what you're calling me now? Yeah! Tom Thomas, how 
help us. And now! Tidish! Cool. By the way, what do you need the red pen for? Well, Tom Thomas and I need to fix something in his assignment book. What? If I knew that, I wouldn't have helped you out. So no fidgeting and no talking. Hmm. And your teacher, she writes in your assignment book when you behave well? Uh-huh. Whenever we behave well, she writes a note in our books right away. Ah. Did you see, Simka, how Tom Thomas managed to outsmart everybody? Since I see nothing else here from your teacher, does that mean you behave badly the other days? Uh-huh. What? Well, uh... Did you see, Nolik, how Tom Thomas just managed to outsmart himself? Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small that makes you doubt. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The refrigerator. Good job! My homework is all done! Okay, you're it! Just stay still. Oh, oh, you're really stuck. Simka, we're not gonna leave me, right? We aren't. But I'm afraid, Nolik, you'll be stuck for a while. Tom Thomas, help me! What's going on? Look, this blob of white stuff grabbed onto Nolik and it won't let go of him. Oh, it's a piece of gum. It's my bubble gum. Oh, thanks a lot, Tom Thomas. Now, what's the plan to get me unstuck from here? Here's what we do. It's got to be frozen. Once I sat on gum, too, and my mom put my pants in the freezer. The gum froze up and it came right off. I don't want to go into the freezer. Don't worry, Nolik. I'll stay right here with you. Just hold on. It won't take long at all. Huh. Why do I need to hold on? The gum's already holding on to me. Simka, do you know why it's so cold in the freezer when outside it's warm? I'll explain it to you. A refrigerator has a pump that pushes a special liquid through a long tube. Inside the refrigerator, the liquid in the tube wants to turn into a gas. To do that, it takes the heat from everything inside, and that makes the refrigerator cool. Then the pump sucks in the gas and pushes it out as a hot liquid into the tubes on the back of the refrigerator. That lets all of the heat collected from the inside escape into the air outside. Uh, I wish I was somewhere warm. Hold on. I'll go get us some warm clothes to wear. I don't want to hold on. I want to go with you. Just hang in there. I'm hanging. Tom Thomas, open up! Masia, do we have any warm clothing to wear? Why in the world do you need it? I just do. Well, I need to know what is happening. Uh... Hooray! Tom Thomas! Simka! Open up the door! It looks like I'm gonna freeze up in here for good. A Fixie is constantly surrounded by all sorts of danger. Inside a dark freezer, a Fixie can lose his way and freeze to death. 
If he's not paying attention, he can drown inside of a washing machine or inside of a dishwasher. And a careless fixie is always at risk of getting an electric shock. Or suppose there's a short circuit inside of an appliance that starts a fire. If this happens, you need to run away if you want to survive. And what about humans? Well, they don't even believe that we fixies exist at all. So they can accidentally drop something on top of a fixie, or step on one, or kick us across the room. So if we don't get out of the way in time, ah! Oh! So what I'm saying, fixies, you need to be careful out there and pay attention. So be smart and stay safe, fellow fixies. I don't understand this at all. He was right here. Poor Nolik. I wonder where he went. Look at this! Footprints! Nolik! You're alive! You scared me half to death! How did you get out of there? Well, you told me about how a refrigerator works. And so I found that cold tube and started crawling on it until it got hot, and then I was here! Hey, there's smoke coming out of you. We need to cool you down right away! Huh? Where? <laughs> Look how it froze. I could break my teeth on it. You aren't gonna chew it anymore. I'd never do that, not after Nolik sat on it. Well, you didn't need to stick it where it doesn't belong. Hey, I apologize. I'll go and throw it away. Maybe you'll try the trash can? I almost caught one yesterday. I chased him by the fled. But if I told my dad, he'd say, it's, it's all inside your head. head. You really cannot catch them Or find their whereabouts But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out The Vent Tom Thomas Tom Thomas Okay Simka, Tula, check it out. It's pretty, isn't it? Oh, splendid. It's nothing but a trinket. It's completely useless. Useless? Look how well it matches my hair clip. Useful things are the kinds of things you truly need. For instance, like this rope ladder I've got. It's splendid. And where do you plan on climbing with this thing? Now this mirror here is both useful and pretty. Oh, how splendid! Tula, you say everything is splendid. Well, here's something super splendid that I bet you don't have. Oh, what is it? It's a mechanical super claw. It must be just perfect for scratching your back. <laughs> now look what I have. A photograph of Vector. And he signed it for me, too. Are you sure that's Vector? You've got a photo of the bravest fixie on the face of the entire planet? Yeah, and the most beautiful. Is it him for sure? No way! Let me take a look. Uh-uh. You'll smudge it. You've been fooled. No. Yes. Jealous? You are. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Ah! My photo! Oh, no! What was that? Uh, a draft. This is completely your fault. It's not my fault. It's your fault for bragging so much. Please, girls, stop fighting. Let's go find it. To lose a picture signed by the most famous fixie ever. It will be horrible when that picture of a fixie is found by humans. So where could it be? <gasps> I know how we can find it. Exactly. We'll blow a bubble and watch which way it goes as it floats away. We'll follow it and find your picture. Do you know why you can blow bubbles out of soapy water? At the surface of any liquid, there's an invisible film that is very thin but very strong. 
If you want to see it for yourself, fill up a glass with water all the way to the very top. Now you need to take a coin and carefully drop it into the water sideways. Then drop in another coin, and another, and another. You'll see that the water doesn't pour out, but rises up and forms a hump. That's because the water at the top sticks together. Why? Because of a force called surface tension. Thanks to surface tension, water can form drops. It also helps us blow soap bubbles. Because when we add soap into the water, the film gets even stronger. But still not strong enough to stop the bubbles from bursting. <laughs> okay, it's ready. Now we need to blow. <gasps> Do it together. And... <gasps> This way's gonna work. Look, it's flying! I did it! The vent! Of course! Why didn't I think of that before? Have you ever seen holes in the bathroom or kitchen that are covered with grids? Well, those are called vents. And behind the vent is a long pipe called an air duct. Unpleasant odors and musty air can be forced into the ducts and sent out of the house. And if you want that old, stale air to leave the house even faster, open a window and let in some of the fresh air from outside. Keep the air in your home as fresh as it can be. Hey, take a look! It got stuck over there! Get it before it flies away! How can we grab it? What do you mean? Don't you remember what I've got? Tiddish! Thank you, Simka. What would we ever have done without your mechanical claw? And your fantastic ladder? Then here you go. A present for you. Oh, thanks. It's just great. And I want to give you this. Oh, gee. It's just splendid. Simka, are you here? Huh. What you got there, Simka? A little mirror. It's pretty, don't you think? Oh, you girls. <laughs> You're all the same. <sighs> I almost caught one yesterday. I chased him, but he fled. But if I told my daddy, he'd say, It's, it's all inside, inside your head. head. You really cannot catch them. Or find their whereabouts. But if you meet a fixer, please don't fight. on the television. Hey, Nolik, that's not a television. That's a machine for washing laundry. No way. Yeah, it's just a plain old washing machine, Nola, don't you know? Uh-uh. Tell me about it. You're such a great explainer. Inside of a washing machine is a big drum. People put their dirty laundry in there and add a special kind of soap called detergent. When they turn the washing machine on, the drum fills with water, and then the motor starts to spin the drum. That makes the laundry rub together, forcing the soapy water in and the dirt out to make your clothes clean. After that, all that's left is to get out the water by spinning the drum really fast and sending the water down the drain. Oh, thanks a lot, Simka. I always wondered, why would you want to put laundry inside a television? Are you joking with me? Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, I'll show you a funny joke. Get over here. Shh! It's Tom Thomas' mother. She's got headphones on. We're safe. She doesn't hear anything except the music. Now she'll come back, add the soap, turn on her television, and watch the second part of the movie. Again with the jokes. This time I'm really gonna let you have it. <laughs> Whoa! Nolik, just do what I say. I came up with a plan. What's your plan? To run away! Whoa! <laughs> Who's here? Hello? Huh. Oh. 
in mind with a washing machine to use it right. For example, do you know what can happen if you wash red and white shirts together? Well, the white one might just turn pink. No, it's not because it's embarrassed, but because some of the color from the red shirt happened to get onto the white one. Another important thing to remember is to empty your pockets before you wash your clothes. Things like keys, nails, and chewing gum might not only ruin your clothes, but they can destroy the washer too. And this isn't only about little stuff. Big things like music players and mobile phones have managed to find their way into the washing machine. Oh, sure, these things look nice and clean after a good washing, but they certainly don't seem to want to work anymore. And never, ever put a pet inside of a washing machine. That's just no place for a living thing. You know what, Simka? I've never been laundered in my entire life. We better get out of here, Nolik, right now. And the faster, the better. <sighs> Come on, let's get going. And what about Chusaka? What about Chusaka? Let her get washed up a little in there. Maybe it'll make her nicer. But she could drown the poor thing. I don't think we can do this alone. We should get help from Tom Thomas's mother. One, two, stop! What? She moved out of the way. Baby, how did you get in there? You wait right here in the tub and I'll go get you a towel. So, you wild little beast. Looks like we saved your life. We're friends now? No, like, sure doesn't look like she wants to be our friend. So what do we do now? Same old plan. Run! <laughs> Two bunnies. I just got them as a present. You had two bunnies? Are you sure of that? Of course. You think I don't know my ones from my twos? Huh. Then someone stole one. Unless, uh, unless... <gasps> you went and ate it yourself! Me? How come I don't remember anything about it? Maybe you're a sleepwalker. What is a sleepwalker? Someone who gets up from his bed at night without waking up. He crosses the room, eats one of his chocolate bunnies, and doesn't remember a thing in the morning. But in the morning, the bunny was still there. Yeah? Huh. How about... Your mother? Could she have taken it? She doesn't like when you're eating too much candy. No, she doesn't. She says that candy's terrible for my teeth. And so... To save your teeth from these sweets, she snuck quietly into your room, snatched one of the rabbits, and ate it. But Mom's the one who gave them to me as a present. And so why would she take it? Yeah? 
Then I just don't know. Well, I do. I think it was your father. He wouldn't steal it. We know he's allergic to chocolate. <laughs> Next he'll tell us how the fish took it. You know, I always thought there was something fishy about those fish. No doubt about it. They stole the bunny. <laughs> Uh-huh, and then they hid it in their aquarium. <laughs> oh, no, like, that's funny. You know what, Tom Thomas? You need to protect that other chocolate hair. Exactly. It has to be eaten right away, now, before it disappears. Just wait a little. You don't have to eat it. Let's think of something else. Of course, we need a security alarm. Need what? <sighs> The alarm was invented to keep houses, cars, and other valuable things safe and secure. The simplest alarm is a siren or light bulb that is connected by wires to a door or window. When someone tries to open a door that has an alarm on it, the alarm goes off, making the siren howl and the light flash. Alarms can also be set up to call the police if they go off. Super! But where can we get ourselves a security alarm? You have an electronic construction kit, remember? You're right. Then bring it over here. Nolik, help me! is the Fixie's victory call. When a job is well done and we Fixies are proud of our work, we exclaim, Tadish! And raise up our hand with our thumb and first two fingers sticking out. You want to know what it means? It's very simple. Fixies love solving problems and fixing things that are broken. And do you know what you need to do to solve a problem? First, you need to find out what's broken. Second, understand why it broke. And third, repair what's broken so it works again. So do what the Fixies do and first, find it. Second, understand it. And third, fix it. Tadish! <laughs> it really is a great word. And it sounds funny. But we Fixies surely like it a lot. Well, Tom Thomas, turn on the alarm. You sure the alarm will work? I'm sure. Without a doubt. You're under arrest. Freeze! Chusaka? Why are you stealing my chocolate? They take care of our machines, irons, phones, and toasters. Nolik, whose cube is it? The Rubik's Cube is the most popular puzzle game in the whole world. It was invented by Professor Rubik from Hungary. A cube has six sides on it. And on a Rubik's Cube, each of these sides has nine squares that are all the same color. You start by mixing up the colors. 
Rubik's Cube, you have to turn the pieces, and you keep turning and turning them until each side is one solid color again. For instance, red or yellow or light blue. Ha! That's nothing. Hey, Tom Thomas! How long have you been messing around with this cube already? It's been three whole days of turning. Three whole days? We could solve that puzzle in five minutes, now couldn't we, Simka? Oh, really? Then go right ahead. I'm off to school. Well, you ready to show Tom Thomas who's boss? <laughs> Just count me out. Hey, I thought you said Rubik's Cubes are easy to solve. I never said anything like that. This problem is all yours, Mr. Bragger. All right, I'll figure it out myself. Ugh. Ugh. Like you've got a problem. Oh, hi, Fire. Yeah. Now I'm good. Just solving this Rubik's Cube. Yeah? Can I do it with you? What? You can do it? Of course I can. How hard can it be? You'll see for yourself. Try getting all the red squares on one side. Piece of cake. Now hold it tight. Great. I'm with you. Ugh. Whoa! Like that? Class. Uh, and what about this side? What? This side's gotta be all blue. Okay, let's go fix it. There, like you wanted. Now what happened to the red side? Huh? Simka was telling me that on each side there has to be one color. Oh, like Sim could be able to do this? Simka can do it all. Well, if Simka can, then I can too. Oh! Fire! You busted the cube! I didn't bust it, I took it apart. Now let's put it together. And not just any way, but the right way. Puzzles are toys, games, or problems that force you to use your mind in a clever and creative way. Take a labyrinth, for example. In a labyrinth, the challenge is to find the one way to get through a series of tangled corridors. Another fun puzzle is a jigsaw puzzle. Here, you need to put together a picture out of many little pieces. For this, you need to not only pay attention, but be patient. And there are all sorts of puzzles for the computer. One popular computer puzzle is Tetris. In Tetris, different shapes fall down the screen, and you have to think quickly to get them to line up into rows. And solving puzzles isn't only a great activity for people, it's good for fixies, too. That's right, puzzles are like exercises for our brain. There, all done. No, Lick, you better hurry, cause Tom Thomas is on his way home. Hi there, Simka. Just take a look at this, we did it. I can't believe it. How? Oh, it was a piece of cake. Simka, no, Lick, I'm back. Well, I'm out of here. Ciao, woohee! Wow, you really solved it. It was no, Lick. No, Lick, you are cool, so how? You see? First, you break it apart into all of the pieces, and then you put it all back huh? together. No! That's cheating. You gotta turn the cube, not take it apart. Now I'll solve this cube, honestly. I don't think you can. Why are you so sure? I glued it together. Uh, how come? So you'll stop straining your brain with it. Now the cube will always be the right way. But if it doesn't turn, it's not a Rubik's Cube. Well, yeah. Now. It's a Nolix cube, right? They take care of our machines, irons, phones, and toasters, MP3s and TV screens, even roller coasters. Without them, clocks stop ticking. Without them, lights go out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. Secret.
out. The nightlight. They're very close. I can feel them. That's all. You've had enough monsters. It's not good to watch these kinds of movies before bed. Mom, Mom, really, I'm not scared. Let me watch the end, would you? I told you, that's all. Well, good night, honey. Close. I feel them. <sighs> Can you believe it? He's sleeping, and he didn't turn the light off. Yeah, and so? And so, if every human went to sleep with a light on, there wouldn't be enough electricity to go around. Hup! Everyone can probably remember walking into an empty room with the lights turned on. Or finding a TV on that nobody's watching. One little light or TV might not seem like much, but just imagine how many people are living on this Earth. Well, if everybody forgot to turn off the lights or TV when they weren't being used, the amount of wasted electricity would equal the amount of energy produced by a hundred power plants. And each of these power plants needs freight cars of coal or rivers of oil to keep running. And all that fuel has to be extracted and burned constantly. Now do you see how expensive burning a light bulb is for the Earth? So don't forget to turn off electrical appliances when you're not using them. It's so easy. Uh, who turned off the light? They're very close. I feel them. I feel them. I feel them. I... Look! What's up with him? I think he's playing sleep hockey. Looks like his position is left out. Ha ha. Anyway, he should get a penalty for wasting electricity. Oh. <gasps> Monsters! Hey, what do you think we are, hockey pucks? Nolik, Simka, forgive me. Who did you think we were? Mm, monsters. Huh. Well, I see how you could mistake Simka for one, but obviously not me. <laughs> Tom Thomas, what are you doing? Why are you sleeping with the light on? I was so dumb. I watched this monster movie on TV before bed. Now I'm scared to sleep without the light on. And that dumb old monster flick, why were you watching it? I felt like getting scared. Ah! You're great at getting scared. Keep quiet, or we'll wake up your mom and dad. How am I gonna fall asleep now? Here's a good idea. You can use a nightlight. A nightlight is a little light that humans who don't like to sleep in the dark use in their rooms. The nightlight has a dim glow. That's because it works with a special kind of light bulb that uses very little electricity. These kinds of light bulbs are called energy efficient. <laughs> That's hard to say. <laughs> and you can find nightlights that use such low energy bulbs that they can work off of a battery. But you know there isn't a nightlight here. <laughs> How would you get by without us? Tonight, I'm here to help you. I'm gonna be your nightlight. Look, right there. There's our lampshade. Thanks so much. You really are a friend indeed, Nolik. It was easy. Just go to sleep. Nolik, <sighs> do you know any good stories? I know one about a big meat grinder. Nah, no way. You'd better tell me a story about a nice kind fixie. Ah, I know a good one. And here's how it goes. 
Grandpoos was working inside of a very big clock. Actually, the clock wasn't that big. And I'm not sure if it was Grandpoos, but it was a clock, I think. teacher wrote in my assignment book. Bad behavior during the lesson, fidgeting, and talking. What are you gonna do with the red pen? Your teacher left something out? I thought maybe, you know, I could fix it a bit. I hope I find that pen. Oh, what? Oh, what? Wow, good catch. So, what do you want to fix on it? I'll just add a couple of no's, and then it will say that I had no bad behavior during the lesson, no fidgeting, and no talking. See, no problem. Cool. And then add this at the end. Tom Thomas is a perfect student. Nah, then they would guess I did it. What, is it clogged up? A little scribble will do it. It's not a pen, it's more like a pen knife. Oh, look, the ball's missing. What ball? It's a pen. It's a pen, but it's a ballpoint pen. <laughs> Old fashioned pens work by dipping the pen into a jar of ink. But with a ballpoint pen, the ink is stored inside of a tube that has a metal tip on the end with a small steel ball. Well, small for humans, that is, but of course, for fixies, it's quite large. When you drag the pen across the paper, the ball spins around and gets ink on it from inside the tube. Then it turns over and the ink rolls out onto the paper. So without the ball, a ballpoint pen won't write at all. So what am I going to do? That's my only red pen. Hi, everybody. Why do you look so sad? Uh, we lost the ball from the tip of this pen. Where? It's here somewhere. Then you're in luck, boys. In the pack of mat there's a metal detector. You can use it to find different kinds of metal objects. <laughs> nah, that's not it. I can see that myself. It's not on the table, Nolik. Until not that long ago, humans used pens that had to be dipped over and over again into an inkwell. This was quite inconvenient. And so to make writing easier, the fountain pen was invented. A fountain pen could be filled up with ink, so it could write for a much longer time. But fountain pens would often leak, leaving blots of ink on the paper. This problem was solved with the invention of the ballpoint pen. Ballpoint pens are simple, handy, and reliable, except that you can't write with them on a wall or upside down for a long time. That's because the ball uses up the ink on it, and the ink can't flow up to the tip. But even this problem has been solved. There are now special ballpoint pens that can be used by astronauts floating in space. Is the one? You're right. That's it. Don't you just see how awesome my metal detector is? Is that what you're calling me now? Yeah! Tom Thomas, help us. What do you need the red pen 
for? Well, Tom Thomas and I need to fix something in his assignment book. What? If I knew that, I wouldn't have helped you out. So no fidgeting and no talking. Hmm. And your teacher, she writes in your assignment book when you behave well? Uh-huh. Whenever we behave well, she writes a note in our books right away. Ah. Did you see, Simka, how Tom Thomas managed to outsmart everybody? Since I see nothing else here from your teacher, does that mean you behaved badly the other days? Uh-huh. What? Well, uh... Did you see, Nolik, how Tom Thomas just managed to outsmart himself? There, Professor. Ooh. I have to find an outlet so I can plug in this fan. Ooh, it feels terribly hot. It sure does. Well, keep looking. You'll find one. <coughs> now then, where was I? All oh, right. Today? Oh! No, it's impossible. In this whole laboratory, there isn't one free outlet. Look at this. Just pull out one of these wires, and then you'll have a free outlet. I can't. <laughs> I fear I could pull out a plug for something important. Ah, uh, Volt himself would get all tangled up in these wires. Whew. Don't worry about it, Professor Eugenius. We'll find a free outlet for you. That's right, my colleague. A cup of tea will do you good. So just go relax. Thank you, my colleague. And as always, I'm eternally grateful. Fixies have opened schools for their children in all sorts of different places, like factories, stores, and warehouses. Anywhere where there's lots of machines and appliances and places to hide from humans. And this is where we hold our school, right here inside the laboratory of Professor Eugenius. It's a fantastic place for me to hold class. Every day, new devices, materials, toys, and even food are brought here for examination. And there are lots of scientific devices and tools to study here as well. But most importantly, we never need to hide from the head of the laboratory. Because my colleague, Professor Eugenius, is someone I'm proud to call a friend. He loves fixies, helps us anytime we need, and will never let our secret out. What should we do first? We have to start out with pulling apart these wires. <laughs> That'll take a second. Here! No, like, come and help! Let's do this! Uh, uh. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, just one more time! <laughs> Stop it! I can't get out! Loosen the wires! We need to pull out this one! <laughs> Stop this nonsense, will ya? <laughs> Thank you, Digit. Tiddish. Well, the way I see it, in order to get the knot out that's over here, we need to expand the loop that's over there. And then push that wire through it. And then do it again from the other end. Yeah. That's it. Very good, girls. Hey! Now pull it hard. Perfect. Hey, check it out. The screen wire up here isn't plugged into anything. Then no one's using it. So that means we should go and pull it out from the outlet. Got it. <laughs> Vera, here's another wire that isn't plugged in. I found another wire no one's using. Oh, I mean, Simka and I found it together. Molik, why are you so upset? 
because you guys are doing all the work. How about this wire? Nobody's checked it yet. Really? Oh, wow! What? Did you find some treasure, Nolik? Uh-huh. There are six free outlets under here. Great! Now Professor Eugenius can plug in his fan and his kettle and even his soldering iron. To get electricity to a device that doesn't use batteries, you need to plug a pair of wires into an outlet. But it's important not to let the wires touch one another or the electricity can burn them out. That's why wires are covered in plastic or rubber, so the electricity won't pass from one wire to the other or to us when we touch them. So always be very careful with wires. And never, ever touch a bare wire. You could get killed by the electric shock. Oh, what would I do without my wonderful friends? Thank you. Ah, <laughs> uh, sorry. I just, I didn't, I wanted to. Uh, I should go. Go ahead. That's a great idea. And we'll start our class. Uh, what were we talking about? All about wires. Well, it looks like our class is over. Time to go play. Can you believe that pixies are such itty bitty creatures? Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. The thermometer. I can't believe the new thermometer isn't working. Tom Thomas, stay in bed. And I'll try and look for that old mercury thermometer. Hey, did you get sick? That's one way of saying it. I don't know how I'm going to pass that math test today. You're not ready, so you don't want to go to school. Well, yeah. So if you pull a sickie, then you can trick your mom. No, that's not true. I'm just pretending a little bit. You think so? Well, you won't trick the thermometer. Simka, what's a mercury thermometer? <laughs> mercury is a type of liquid metal that's silver in color. There's no mercury inside of new thermometers. Now they're electronic. Old thermometers were made with a glass tube with markings and a bit of mercury inside them. When the end of the tube warms up, the mercury inside of it expands and creeps up the tube. And that's how those old thermometers measure temperature. The longer the column of mercury, the higher the person's temperature is. That means I need to warm up the end of the thermometer. Tom Thomas, you're a genius. But how will you warm it up? Finally, I found it. Well, let's see. Mom, can I eat something? <coughs> Hang in there, sweetie. I'll make you something. Ooh, that is hot. Now there's just no way it won't have a temperature. Hey, what are you doing in here? Well, how high did you get it? 108 is what it's showing. Oh, no. With the temperature that high, they'll send you straight to the hospital. And you don't need that. You'd better shake that thermometer. Yeah, that's what I'll do. That'll get the temperature down a little. Ah! Well, so much for that. Cheaters never prosper. Tom Thomas, did you see this? Nola, don't touch the mercury. It's poisonous. Stop it right now. And you, Tom Thomas, you don't touch that mercury either. It's dangerous. Then how can we throw it out? Call your mom and she can help you. I can't. How could I call her? Then she'd find out that I wanted to trick her. Maybe it's better to tell the truth. I can't. I can't do it. All right, then. It looks like there's no other choice. Nolik, call Papus and Masia. I'll get him. And you go back to your room and wait.
like this whole job is done. Not yet. We still need to neutralize this mercury. In everybody's home, there's all sorts of chemicals around. They are used for cleaning dishes, clothes, the bathroom, and dealing with pests. And all of these substances can be very harmful to human health. But some people don't seem to understand this. They might use a dangerous spray or a poisonous liquid and then forget to wash their hands afterward. And then they go and eat or rub their eyes with their hands. That can cause serious damage to their vision or stomachs. Ugh. And never put anything into your mouth that looks like medicine, unless your parents or a doctor gave it to you. And if you ever happen to find something on the ground that looks like a piece of candy, you must never put it in your mouth. You can get poisoned that way. Oh, humans. If they'd only remember this simple advice, they'd stay safer. And what do we do with the glass that's broken? That job's not for fixies. Hmm. Tom Thomas, we cleaned up all the mercury. And the glass, too? No, not the broken glass. But will you? Pabu said that it's not our job. He told us you have to get your parents to come and help you. That part's your responsibility. Here's some food for you. What's the matter? Hmm? Mom, I... I broke the thermometer. Broke it? Did you cut yourself? No. The mercury, did you touch it? I didn't. Simka, you think you'll tell her the truth? And where did you break it? The bathroom. Why did you go in there? I wanted... I wanted to trick you. I have a test, and I didn't study for it. And now it's too late for school, hmm? your head. You really cannot catch them. Or find their whereabouts. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The Manipulator. Well, what do you say, Professor? It couldn't be any more accurate. Our manipulator works just perfectly. Good! So that means that we're free to go. Great. See you later. All right, finally. Now it's our turn to experiment with that manipulator. And do you know how to operate this manipulator? <laughs> Why do you think we were spying? <laughs> A manipulator is a kind of mechanical arm that people use for difficult or dangerous work. To control a manipulator, humans use a remote control or a joystick. The operator gives the command, and the mechanical arm grabs and moves the load. Some robotic manipulators don't even need to be steered by an operator. They're controlled by computers and can work without people being there at all, even on the moon. What is this button for? Uh-huh. How about this one? Uh-huh. Would you like to take a ride right now? Ha, uh, you're scared. Scared? Not one bit. Then off we go. Yeah, cool. Ha, this is totally awesome. Well, hang on. This is going to get even awesomer. Professor? Hmm, strange. What made this ladder just fall over? Ah! Am I crazy? Or is someone here? Oh, calm down. Calm down now. Poor Elisa. Yeah, you're completely overworked. There, Nolik. I'll get you out of there. My compact's gone. Oh dear, what's going on? Ah! Stop 
stop this nonsense right now, or I'll call the police on you. I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe in... <gasps> Where are you pulling me? I'm going to faint. I'm warning you. That's all. Goodbye. <sighs> Throughout the world, humans use manipulators for all sorts of work. In factories, manipulators are used to lift and move heavy loads. They can also hand out the parts needed for assembly or even attach these parts themselves. In hospitals, more precise manipulators are used by doctors to help perform operations. Manipulators are also used in places where the work is simply too dangerous for people. For instance, where there are deadly chemicals or places where humans can't get to easily. Like somewhere underground where there isn't enough space to move or deep under the water or in outer space where there's absolutely no <laughs> air to breathe. So you see, mechanical arms are helpful in all sorts of places where humans are unable to reach things with their own arms. Hang on, Nolik. How can I get that thing open? Ugh, I got it! Yes? Who's there? Ah! What's going on? Uh, uh, achoo! Ah! 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 No, no, Lick? What are you doing in there? Achoo! We just <laughs> took a little test flight. Is this yours? <gasps> Elisa! Elisa! Professor Eugenius, I was attacked by a crazy arm. The manipulator. <laughs> it's your imagination. Look, it's come back. Stop, stop, I'm telling you. Professor Eugenius, it heard what you just said. Calm down, it's okay. It was a little malfunction, but I took care of it. You are just astounding. And don't think that I'm through with you. With me? With you? <laughs> no, no, with the manipulator. Let's go, Elisa. Yeah, let's go, Professor. Great job, fire. And why fire? Fixies have a special sign I happen to discover. They have three fingers in the air and flash it to each other. They send their greetings to you. They sing them and they shout. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. Be quiet. Quiet down, please. Oh, it's so hot here. In today's class, we'll learn about... Uh, oh. Whoa! What was that, huh? It must have been an earthquake. Yeah, it was an earthquake. Hooray! Eh, sorry there, Professor. Ooh, I have to find an outlet so I can plug in this fan. Ooh, it feels terribly hot. It sure does. Well, keep looking. You'll find one. <coughs> now then, where was I? Oh, right. Today? Oh! No, it's impossible. In this whole laboratory, there isn't one free outlet. Look at this. Just pull out one of these wires, and then you'll have a free outlet. I can't. <laughs> I fear I could pull out a plug for something important. Uh, Volt himself would get all tangled up in these wires. Whew. Don't worry about it, Professor Eugenius. We'll find a free outlet for you. That's right, my colleague. A cup of tea will do you good, so just go relax. Thank you, my colleague. And as always, I'm eternally grateful. Fixies have opened schools for their children in all sorts of different places, like factories, stores, and warehouses. Anywhere where there's lots of machines and appliances and places to hide from humans. And this is where we hold our school, right here inside the laboratory of Professor Eugenius. It's a fantastic place for me to hold class. 
Every day, new devices, materials, toys, and even food are brought here for examination. And there are lots of scientific devices and tools to study here as well. But most importantly, we never need to hide from the head of the laboratory. Because my colleague, Professor Eugenius, is someone I'm proud to call a friend. He loves Fixies, helps us anytime we need, and will never let our secret out. What should we do first? We have to start out with pulling apart these wires. <laughs> That'll take a second. Uh, over here! Uh, no, here. No, like, come and help! Let's do this! Uh, uh. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, just one more time! Stop it! I can't get out! Loosen the wires! We need to pull out this one! Stop this nonsense, will ya? Thank you, Digit. Tiddish. Well, the way I see it, in order to get the knot out that's over here, we need to expand the loop that's over there and then push that wire through it. And then do it again from the other end. Yeah. That's it. Very good, girls. Hey! Now pull it hard. Perfect. Hey, check it out. The screen wire up here isn't plugged into anything. Then no one's using it. So that means we should go and pull it out from the outlet. Got it. using. Oh, I mean, Simka and I found it together. Molik, why are you so upset? Because you guys are doing all the work. How about this wire? Nobody's checked it yet. Really? Oh, wow! What? Did you find some treasure, Nolik? Uh-huh. There are six free outlets under here. Great! Now Professor Eugenius can plug in his fan, and his kettle, and even his soldering iron. To get electricity to a device that doesn't use batteries, you need to plug a pair of wires into an outlet. But it's important not to let the wires touch one another, or the electricity can burn them out. That's why wires are covered in plastic or rubber, so the electricity won't pass from one wire to the other or to us when we touch them. So always be very careful with wires. And never, ever touch a bare wire. You could get killed by the electric shock. Oh, what would I do without my wonderful friends? Thank you. Ah, uh, sorry. I just, I didn't, I wanted to. Uh, I should go. Go ahead. That's a great idea. And we'll start our class. Uh, what were we talking about? All about wires. Well, it looks like our class is over. Time to go play! I almost caught one yesterday. I chased him, but he fled. But if I told my dad, he'd say, It's, it's all inside your head. head. You really cannot catch them Or find their whereabouts But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out The washing machine Look at that, Simka! They're showing Titanic on the television! No, like, that's not a television. That's a machine for washing laundry. No way. Yeah, it's just a plain old washing machine, Nola, don't you know? Uh-uh. Tell me about it. You're such a great explainer. Inside of a washing machine is a big drum. People put their dirty laundry in there and add a special kind of soap called detergent. When they turn the washing machine on, the drum fills with water, and then the motor starts to spin the drum. That makes the laundry rub together, forcing the soapy water in and the dirt out to make your clothes clean. After that, all that's left 
is to get out the water by spinning the drum really fast and sending the water down the drain. Oh, thanks a lot, Simka. I always wondered, why would you want to put laundry inside a television? Are you joking with me? Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, I'll show you a funny joke. Get over here. Shh, it's Tom Thomas's mother. She's got headphones on. We're safe. She doesn't hear anything except the music. Now she'll come back, add the soap, turn on her television, and watch the second part of the movie. Again with the jokes. This time I'm really gonna let you have it. <laughs> Whoa! No, Lick, just do what I say. I came up with a plan. What's your plan? To run away! <laughs> Who's here? Hello? Huh. Things to keep in mind with a washing machine to use it right. For example, do you know what can happen if you wash red and white shirts together? Well, the white one might just turn pink. No, it's not because it's embarrassed, but because some of the color from the red shirt happened to get onto the white one. Another important thing to remember is to empty your pockets before you wash your clothes. Things like keys, nails, and chewing gum might not only ruin your clothes, but they can destroy the washer too. And this isn't only about little stuff. Big things like music players and mobile phones have managed to find their way into the washing machine. Oh, sure, these things look nice and clean after a good washing, but they certainly don't seem to want to work anymore. And never, ever put a pet inside of a washing machine. That's just no place for a living thing. You know what, Simka? I've never been laundered in my entire life. We better get out of here, Nolik, right now. And the faster, the better. <sighs> Come on, let's get going. And what about Chusaka? What about Chusaka? Let her get washed up a little in there. Maybe it'll make her nicer. But she could drown the poor thing. I don't think we can do this alone. We should get help from Tom Thomas's mother. One, two, stop! What? She moved out of the way. And three! What is that? <gasps> oh, my goodness! Oh, my sweet little baby! How did you get in there? You wait right here in the tub and I'll go get you a towel. So, you wild little beast. Looks like we saved your life. We're friends now? No, it sure doesn't look like she wants to be our friend. So what do we do now? Same old plan! Run! Now 
here he is, our death-defying acrobat. Nolik, don't! I'm not Nolik, I'm an acrobat. You're going to fall. I'm not going to. Mm-hmm, I see. Every single time with him, it's the same old story. He gets himself into trouble, and I've got to get him out of it. No, no, no! I'm falling! Whoa! <gasps> Hold on! Yeah, I'm just joking. No, like, you're a knucklehead! Zipka! <laughs> <laughs> Tula! We're down here! <laughs> Look who's in trouble this time, huh? This isn't funny at all! Need some help? We can manage this ourselves. Right, Tula? Well, all right then. See you later. We gotta get out of here. <gasps> Tom Thomas's mom is coming! Hide! Hi, Tom Thomas. Hi, Nolik. Are you up for a ride? Because this train's leaving the station. Nice place. It's the oven. It's beautiful in here. And not hot at all. Splendid. It isn't hot right now, because it only started warming up. An oven is a cabinet with a heater. It can get so hot inside that it'll roast whatever's in there. As a matter of fact, that's what ovens are for. People roast meat inside of them and bake things, too. Some ovens burn gas for heat, and others use electricity. They have special electric coils that get red hot and heat everything that's inside the oven. So be careful around ovens. A hot oven can burn you very badly. Oh, it really is getting so hot. We gotta get out of this oven right away! Simka, we're about to get roasted in here. Yeah, inside of a fresh-baked fixie cake. I don't want to. You think I do? You'll fall off. Ugh, you're just like Simka. She told me the same thing, and then she was the one who fell. Right into the batter. Together with Tula. <laughs> what? They both fell in the dough? Oh, yeah. And they're probably still stuck in there, too. Tom Thomas, the cake's fresh out of the oven. Do you want to try some? <gasps> Where could they be, huh? I don't know. Maybe they're inside the cake. They could have turned into screws. We gotta find them. Hey, what are you doing? Eat. Stop playing. Hey, watch out. You could break your teeth. The first ovens in ancient homes were nothing more than simple fire pits where people cooked on hot coals. Later on, the stove was invented. Every house had a stove made out of stone, clay, or cast iron. People would burn wood or coal in them. These stoves produced enough heat to make soup or bake a cake. And then in the 19th century, the gas stove was invented. Gas stoves are much more practical than wood-burning stoves. One second and the gas is burning. A few more minutes and the water's boiling. They're very convenient, but they can also be dangerous because if the pipes aren't in good condition, there can be an explosion. Today, there are also stoves and ovens that run with electricity. They use electric heating elements for frying, boiling, or baking foods without fire at all. Tom Thomas, I think you'll explode. Oh, but it's so incredibly good. I just can't stop eating it. Hmm. Keep chewing, Tom Thomas. Mm. Uh, that's as much as I can chew. Hey, what are you guys up to? Hey. Uh, up to? We're trying to save you. You're not in the cake? Then how come I was eating all of this? I hate cake. Hmm, uh, maybe it's because that's what good friends do. Yeah, he's a good friend. 
Who's got a really good appetite? <laughs> <laughs> to survive three days without any TV. Really? Can I be on the stakeout with you? Shh. Simka! Ha! Aha! I gotcha! What? Who? You lost the bet, Tom Thomas. Just tell me you didn't. I didn't. Why didn't you? It's because I... Mm, I'm not Tom Thomas. What? I'm Tom's brother. That's totally not true. We know Tom Thomas doesn't have a brother. I meant his first cousin. Then how come you two look so much alike? It's because our mothers are twins. So what should we call you? Who, me? Uh, John Johnson. And who are you, by the way? As if you don't know who we are. This room is beautiful. Sure is bigger than mine. I don't believe you. You're telling a lie. And what is your proof? Maybe he's not lying. There's a way to check it. How? Yeah, how? With a lie detector. You'll see. <laughs> a lie detector is a device that is used to help figure out if someone is telling the truth or if they are lying. You see, when someone is lying, they always get a little bit nervous. Even though we might not see it, we know that a liar's heart beats a little faster, his breathing changes, and he sweats. A lie detector can pick up on all of these little things. And that's how a lie detector can be used to help find the truth. But you don't have a lie detector. But we know how a lie detector works, don't we? Or are you scared? Tom Thomas. What's that for? To listen to your pulse. How come? So I'll be able to check how fast your heart is beating. And Nolik? He's gonna keep an eye on how often you blink. And what are you doing with the egg? The egg is an old African method. If you're not telling the truth, your hand will automatically squeeze the egg. And so, the egg will crack. Well, my egg won't crack. We'll see about that. Humans have tried to come up with all sorts of ways to find out the truth. For instance, in ancient China, they would put some dry rice in a person's mouth when they told him the crime they believed he committed. Then, they checked the rice. If the rice stayed dry, they believed he had committed the crime. In ancient India, a person had to bang on a gong while answering a judge's questions. If he started banging the gong louder, then it was believed that he was trying to hide the truth. And in Europe, if one knight accused another of lying, then they would just take part in a duel. Whoever won that one was said to be on the side of truth. No, it's not easy to hide the truth. But sometimes it can be even harder to find it. Answer yes or no. You got that? Do you have two ears? Don't you have eyes? Just yes or no. Yes. Answer, are you a girl? Hey, come on. Yes or no? No. Where do you find such dumb questions? We just have to check what happens to your heart when you tell the truth to us. All right, now answer this. Do you know the Fixies? Yes or no? Yes. Uh, no. I forgot. His pulse is speeding up. Are you Tom Thomas? No. Ah, uh, his pulse is racing. And his eyes have started. 
started blinking. And the Fixies, tell us where you learned about them. From Tom Thomas. He couldn't have told you about us. It's a secret. He could. Not true. It's true. It's not true. Yes, it is. Hey, look! The egg cracked! Just give up, John Johnson. All right, I'm Tom Thomas, guys. Tish! Is it really possible to know if you lied just by measuring your pulse? With pulse, you really can. But you probably couldn't with the egg. You tricked me then. That wasn't nice. You weren't tricked. John Johnson was. Huh, you know what? I think you've got to get checked out on this lie detector. Ha! I don't think so. You need to get ready to give me my wish. Because you're the one that lost the bet. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out.